Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Zambia Got Independence Zambia's campaign for independence lasted for about 20 years, from 1944 to 1964. At that time, the region now called Zambia was known as Northern Rhodesia and it was a British colony. The original goals of the campaign were to prevent the joining of Northern Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia and Nyasa land to form the British-administered Central African Federation. In addition, the campaign aimed to put an end to discrimination against the black majority within the political, economic and social spaces of Northern Rhodesia. However, towards the end of the 1950s, radical campaigners began expanding their aspirations. They called not only for the dissolution of the federation, but also for the formation of an independent state. The white settlers of British-controlled Northern Rhodesia planned to unite the British colonial territories of Northern Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia and Nyasaland during the late 1930s and 1940s. This was to ensure a stronger grip of their political and economic power. This was a reaction to the growing strength of African organizations like labor unions in Northern Rhodesia, a development which they feared would advance the social and economic fortunes of the African majority. So, to keep their economic power and political influence over the black majority of Northern Rhodesia, white settlers sought to strengthen their ties with white-controlled Southern Africa by forming the Central African Federation. However, black Africans in Northern Rhodesia furiously kicked against the prospect of such marriage as they were afraid of losing more land to the Europeans and in terms of political representation, land ownership, trade union power, and past law control, Africans in Southern Rhodesia were having it more difficult than their counterparts in Northern Rhodesia. To tackle this issue, black Africans of Northern Rhodesia sought the aid of local tribal chiefs who were the traditional custodians of the land. In 1944, a senior member chief spoke against federation in the Northern Provincial Council and increasing numbers of chiefs began to speak out against the planned amalgamation. Clerks and teachers also, who had seats in the African Representative Council, agitated for the formation of an expressly political body that could better organize for political action against the white settlers. Then the Northern Rhodesian Congress was formed in 1948. As African nationalism continued to grow, the Northern Rhodesian Congress was renamed the Northern Rhodesia African National Congress NRANC, in 1951 and Hari Nkumbula became its president. The main goal of the Congress was to prevent the Federation from forming. A mass action was planned after a series of conferences in Lusaka which involved tribal chiefs, Congress leaders, trade unionists and opposition leaders. In March 1953, Hari Nkumbula, president of the Congress, burned the British White Paper on Federation and made a national call for non-cooperation with the federal government, calling for a two-day national prayer that would hold in April during which no Africans would go to work. However, the British colonial government, mining companies and other big employers took measures to counter the upcoming general strike. African workers were threatened with instant sacking if they were to take part in the strike. This tactic worked and many workers did not observe the strike. The British colonial government continued its wave of arrest, persecution and intimidation of leaders of the opposition. The Central African Federation was eventually formed in August 1953 and popular support for the Congress became weaker. Their failure to prevent the formation for the Federation notwithstanding, Congress leaders and members of the opposition in Northern Rhodesia continued to challenge the legitimacy of the Federation and its policy of racial discrimination. From 1954 to 1958, 
leaders of the opposition continue to urge students, mine workers and other black Africans to boycott European businesses and to practice non-cooperation with the federal government. Such boycotts would bring white businesses to a standstill for weeks and the colonial government as usual responded with beatings, assaults and arrests. In 1955, Congress President Nkumbula and Secretary General Kenneth Kaunda were both jailed for two months for having prohibited literature, but their arrest only drew the public's attention to their organizing efforts, making them heroes. Popular support for the Congress revived in 1958. By this time, the poverty and economic distress among blacks had increased. In addition, there was an entry of young leaders into the Congress during this time which brought a new, strong and radical energy to the organization. These young leaders were Kaunda, Sikotawina and Simon Kwapwepwe, among others. The goal was the creation of an independent African state that would be free of British colonial rule. This nation they envisioned would be called Zambia. However, this vision conflicted with the one held by other Congress members, including Nkumbula. In 1958, Nkumbula favored participating in the elections that would form a new constitution for Northern Rhodesia and allow about 25,000 Africans to vote, while the radicals sought to boycott the election entirely. This division led to a split in Congress and the Zambia African National Congress ZANC, was formed, headed by Kaunda, Wina, and Kapwepwe. In 1959, the government banned the ZANC and NRANC and jailed its leaders, including Kaunda. But the agitators went on to form the United National Independence Party UNIP, and Kaunda became its leader once he came out of jail in 1960. In December 1960, British colonial authorities, being under much pressure, began to reconsider its stance. They invited Kaunda and other UNIP leaders to London to discuss the future of the colonies. A constitution for Northern Rhodesia was proposed. The constitution was to make possible African majority in the legislature, but the federal Prime Minister, Sir Roy Wilensky, pushed for its revision, fearing it gave too much power to Africans. This prompted a stronger civil disobedience campaign from UNIP throughout the northern and eastern parts of the region in 1961. Kaunda, greatly influenced by the work of Mahatma Gandhi, urged campaigners to protest non-violently. The campaign was largely non-violent. As a result of the campaign, the colonial government once again revised the constitution in 1962, allowing UNIP to participate in the October 1962 elections. After a major election campaign, UNIP and the Congress won two-thirds of the total vote between them, thus gaining a majority of government seats. With this victory, the Federation was dissolved in 1963. In early 1964, another election was held in Northern Rhodesia and UNIP won decisively and Kaunda was elected Prime Minister and Northern Rhodesia was granted full independence on the 24th of October 1964 and was renamed Zambia. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.